In this video, we will talk about characteristic equations. So first, let's consider the eigenvalue problem for this matrix A. We want to find non-zero x's such that A times the vector x is equal to some scalar lambda times x. The scalar lambda could be zero. It's the vector that can't be zero. So in order to solve this equation, we will rewrite this in homogeneous form. So that's a minus lambda i times x equals zero. So a minus lambda i will be this matrix here where you subtract lambdas from the diagonal. And what are the conditions so that such a vector x can even exist, a non-zero vector? Now, x equals zero is a solution to this homogeneous equation, but in order to get more than that, then well, a minus lambda i has to satisfy certain conditions. Namely, if you recall one of the invertible matrix theorems is that the, if this matrix is invertible, then the only solution to this homogeneous equation is just x equals zero. So you want to make sure that a minus lambda i is not invertible. So when is something not invertible? Well, when the determinant of the matrix is zero then it's not invertible. So we want to find numbers lambda so that the determinant of a minus lambda i is equal to zero. And this equation is called the characteristic equation. And solutions to the characteristic equations will give us our eigenvalues of this matrix. So let's do it for this example. So here is our characteristic equation. The determinant of a two by two is not too bad. It's just the product of the diagonals minus the product of the off diagonals. So if we multiply this out, you get this quadratic equation, which we can factor, so that the solution to this quadratic equation is lambda equals negative seven and lambda equals three. And negative seven and three will be our eigenvalues. Once you know the eigenvalues, then you repeat the process as in a previous video to find the eigenvectors. But let's do it one more time. For the eigenvalue negative seven, we first plug into this equation. So we get this matrix. Now remember, we're trying to solve for the homogeneous equation corresponding to this. So when we form the augmented matrix, it's not too hard to show that after converting this into reduced row echelon form, we will get one, one third, zero, and zeros everywhere else. So our pivot position is here, and x2 will be our free variable column. So we have this as our eigenvector. Now remember, x2 is a free variable, so let's just pick a convenient x2, like three. So when you plug in x2 equals three, you'll get the vector negative 1 3 and let's test if this is an eigenvector so if we multiply a by our eigenvector negative 1 3 we will get negative 2 plus 9 is 7 and negative 3 minus 18 is negative 21 if you factor out negative 7 we get that a times negative 1 3 is equal to just negative 7 times negative 1 3 so we did our calculation correct and indeed this is an eigenvector let's try the same thing for the eigenvalue 3 if you plug in 3 and if we solve the homogeneous problem corresponding to this we have after row reduction the augmented matrix will be this so that we'll get the vector 3 1 times x2 this time we'll just let x2 be 1 but actually any scalar multiple of an eigenvector is an eigenvector geometrically that's kind of clear because it's a transformation that stretches this vector its eigenvalue amount so if you start with a longer vector then it's going to just stretch it by the same amount. So it's still an eigenvector corresponding to the same eigenvalue. Before we move on, let me introduce one new terminology uh, called similarity. So if we have square matrices A and B, we say A is similar to B if there is an invertible matrix P such that the matrix A is equal to P inverse times B times P. Now something special about similar matrices is that they have the same eigenvalue and they have the same characteristic equation. And this will come in handy when we want to apply eigenvectors and eigenvalues to other things. 